you're looking at a Dynagen controller. It's a controller we use in all Aurora generators. Uh, it's made by a Canadian company. It's absolutely amazing quality. Uh, never had any issues with these. They're beautiful. They're so simple to use, but they're also quite advanced. Uh, when you first turn your generator on, this is what you're going to see. It's going to show you a little orange uh, a light's going to be on. It's going to tell you it's not an auto. It's giving you a warning here, reminding you you're not an auto. If you've got a transfer switch hooked up, it's not going to do anything. It's going to ignore it because you're not in automatic. Press auto. That light will go away. It'll tell you it's waiting to start, and that's all you have to do. When necessary, and the transfer switch tells the generator to start, it'll start up automatically for you. When the transfer switch tells it to stop, it'll stop the generator automatically for you. Perhaps you want to exercise the generator. You're doing it manually. You don't want it to automatically exercise. Just take it out of auto by pressing off. And you can manually start the generator. Press on. It's going to go through the preheating. It's going to tell you not to put a load on the generator right now. Ignore the battery voltage. I've got a power supply connected to this demo unit. It's going to tell you not to load it. It's going to crank. It's going to tell you the engine has started. Um, the post heating is on. That's a cool feature for those living in cold weather. You can keep the heater on. And now the engine is running in manual run. And we're going to see a bunch of screens here scroll by and a little too fast to talk about them. So we'll press enter to lock the screen little lock symbol here and let's look at the different things that the controller will show you. The runtime, again it's all being simulated here, it's going to show us uh, half an hour of running, total engine run hours, 2901 hours, scroll down here we got our battery voltage, our frequency of the generator is operating at, the oil pressure, the engine speed or an RPM, the fuel level, how much fuel you have remaining in your tank, the engine temperature, the generator um, current, the current transformers it's measuring and telling you how much load you have on, on your generator. Uh, line one and line two are AB here, we're almost 30 amps. And your voltage from line one to neutral, line two to neutral, and uh, line to line. This is a single phase generator, 120 to 40. Again, runtime, engine hours, battery voltage, frequency, oil pressure, engine speed. Uh, there's a bunch of other stuff you can see as well. It's the only thing I've got programmed in here at the moment. I can unlock the screen by pressing enter. Again, I'm manually running the generator right now. Just press off to shut it down. When you're finished and you want to put it back in auto, press auto and walk away. There are a bunch of things you can set and play around with if you want to or need to. Uh, one of the first things I'd want to look at, let's turn it off, enter to get into the menu, is your exercise. And that is under timers, exerciser. You can enable it or disable it. That's to have the generator turn on automatically and recharge the batteries and give it a bit of an exercise. Uh, I always suggest or prefer to do a manual one and transfer a load to the generator and let the generator work rather than it just running idle with nothing connected to it. So on the exerciser, if I go to the enable screen, I'm going to put a little check mark. I'm going to highlight what I want. Press enter, move the check mark to enable. Press it again to record it. And that backs me out of the menu. You can set a delay for when the time is reached to exercise. How long should it show you and display a warning or warn the user that it is about to start automatically and how long it should run. You can also go into the schedule and tell it how often to do this exercise. There's another clock you should set. It's the maintenance clock and you normally set that for how often you should be performing an oil change. On the Perkins engines, they're up to 500 hours between oil changes. Um, if you exceed the runtime from what you've set on here, it'll give you a warning or alarm showing uh, service required. Doesn't mean there's something wrong with your generator. It means the time has expired. You gotta go change your oil. Uh, let's say the power has failed and you're still running your generator and you're going to ignore it for some reason. Well, then you're gonna have to go into the maintenance screen, select reset counter. Yes, reset it. 
and then back out. Keep backing out until the display shuts off and turns back on again. Uh, when you do your oil change, go under count interval and change it. Here I've got it set for 200 hours, but if I scroll up and down, I can change the service interval perhaps to 400 hours. Press enter, little check mark shows up. Enter again will back me out. I did reset my counter, so now I'm good to go for another 400 hours. That's all there is to that one. A lot of other functions on here, but it's really a simple controller to use. Everything is in plain English. Uh, your real concern is just how to turn it on, how to put it in auto, how to turn it off, how to look in the events history if necessary and see what happened while you were away. Um, did somebody play with it? Did you turn it on? Was the power off? Did you put it in auto? Uh, did you run low on fuel? A service required. 150 events will be recorded in this screen and you can always go back and look and see what uh, went on if necessary. It's great for troubleshooting because you're not always sitting there and staring at the generator. Um, a lot of generators don't have this feature and this is something we really like about the Dynagen controllers. We're going to exit out of there. Switch to input and output. Let's not play with that. That's telling it what all the different sensors are connected to and where they are. Uh, timers. Let's see. Engine logic. Delay to start. Preheat mode. Well, it's pretty warm this summer. I don't need the glow plugs on. So let me change the preheat time from 10 seconds. Oops. I made a mistake there. Select it again. Preheat times at 10 seconds. Let's reduce that to zero. I don't need my glow plugs running right now. There's a check mark again to get out. Back, back, back. Now if the generator is told to run, we'll simulate that by pressing run. There's not going to be a countdown timer. It immediately goes into cranking. Don't load. Engine started. And I think I had post heat. Did I do post heat? Yep. I need to change the post heat timer as well. But it's just that simple. There's uh, not much to worry about when you have the Dynagen controller. It's all really done for you. So let's shut it off. Let's go back to post heat. Whoops, wait for it to shut off. Post heat was under timers. Did you see what I did there? Engine logic. There we go. So we had our preheat, our preheat time, uh, sorry, mode time, crank time, don't play with that. When to disconnect from cranking, RPM disconnect, post heat. That's uh, the glow plugs turning on after the engine has started and how long this should stay on for. It helps for cold weather. We don't need it here. We don't need to post heating. Let's, uh, going too fast here. Post heating, let's change it to Zero seconds, there's a check mark, enter, back, enter, back, enter, back, enter, reset, start the generator, there you go, right away, engine started, no post heating, it's ready to use. Turn it off, put it in auto, put it in auto, walk away.